the greatest writers of antiquity. It is common knowledge that the foundation of modern society is based largely on the writings of the ancient world. Appreciating the writers of classical civilization involves an appreciation of interesting ideas that are directly relevant to today's world. So many of the works these writers produced have spanned thousands of years and still resonate with us today. Follow along as we present our list of 15 ancient writers whose works have had a huge impact on modern society and culture worldwide. Number 15. Seneca, the Younger. Lucius Aeneas Seneca the Younger usually known simply as Seneca, was a Roman Stoic philosopher, statesman, dramatist, and, in one work, satirist, from the post-Augustan age of Latin literature. Seneca was born in Cordoba in Hispania, and raised in Rome, where he was trained in rhetoric and philosophy. His father was Seneca the Elder, his elder brother was Lucius Junius Gallio Aeneas, and his nephew was the poet Lucan. In AD 41, Seneca was exiled to the island of Corsica under Emperor Claudius, but was allowed to return in 49 to become a tutor to Nero. When Nero became emperor in 54, Seneca became his advisor and the Praetorian prefect Sextus Afranius Burrus provided competent government for the first five years of Nero's reign. Seneca's influence over Nero declined with time, and in 65 Seneca was forced to take his own life for alleged complicity in the Pisonian conspiracy to assassinate Nero, a crime in which he was likely to have been innocent. Seneca's stoic and calm suicide has become the subject of numerous paintings. As a writer Seneca is known for his philosophical works, and for his plays, which are all tragedies. His prose works include a dozen essays and 124 letters dealing with moral issues. These writings constitute one of the most important bodies of primary material for ancient Stoicism. As a tragedian, he is best known for plays such as his Media, Thyestes, and Phaedra. Seneca's influence on later generations is immense, during the Renaissance he was a sage admired and venerated as an oracle of moral, even of Christian edification, a master of literary style and a model, for, dramatic art. Number 14. Euripides. Euripides was a tragedian who wrote 95 plays. Only 18 plays have survived in the entity today. His most known plays are Alcestis, Media and Helen. The work of Euripides was very modern for his time as he portrays strong women and wise slaves. Euripides is identified with theatrical innovations that have profoundly influenced drama, especially in the representation of traditional, mythical heroes as ordinary people in extraordinary circumstances. Along with Socrates, he was viewed as a decadent intellectual, and was frequently lampooned by comic poets such as Aristophanes. This novel approach led him to pioneer developments that later writers adapted to comedy, some of which are characteristic of romance. He also became the most tragic of poets, focusing on the inner lives and motives of his characters in a way previously unknown. He was the creator of That Cage which is the theatre of Shakespeare's Othello, Racine's Phaedra, of Ibsen and Strindberg, in which imprisoned men and women destroy each other by the intensity of their loves and hates according to B.M. Knox. Euripides was also the literary ancestor of comic dramatists as diverse as Menander and George Bernard Shaw. Number 13. Cicero. Marcus Tullius Cicero was a Roman statesman, lawyer, scholar, philosopher and academic skeptic. Cicero tried to uphold optimate principles during the political crises that led to the establishment of the Roman Empire. His extensive writings include treatises on rhetoric, philosophy and politics, and he is considered one of Rome's greatest orators and prose stylists. Cicero's influence on the Latin language was immense. He wrote more than three quarters of extant Latin literature that is known to have existed in his lifetime, and it has been said that subsequent prose was either a reaction against or a return to his style, not only in Latin but in European languages up to the 19th century. Cicero introduced into Latin the arguments of the chief schools of Hellenistic philosophy and created a Latin philosophical vocabulary with neologisms such as evidentia, humanitas, qualitas, quantitas, and essentia distinguishing himself as a translator and philosopher. It was Petrarca's rediscovery of Cicero's letters that is often credited for initiating the 14th century renaissance in public affairs, humanism, and classical Roman culture. 
Along with his letters, Cicero's most famous works include, De Re Publica, On the Commonwealth, and De Legibus, On the Laws. Plutarch. Plutarch was a Greek Middle Platonist philosopher, historian, biographer, essayist, and priest at the Temple of Apollo in Delphi. He is known primarily for his Parallel Lives, a series of biographies of illustrious Greeks and Romans, and Moele, a collection of essays and speeches. Plutarch's writings have had an enormous influence on English and French literature. Shakespeare paraphrased parts of selected lives in his plays, and occasionally quoted translations of Plutarch's works verbatim. Other admirers included Ben Jonson, John Dreden, Alexander Hamilton, John Milton, Louis Ella Moore, and Francis Bacon, and Robert Browning. Plutarch's influence declined in the 19th and 20th centuries, but it remains embedded in the popular ideas of Greek and Roman history. One of his most famous quotes was one that he included in one of his earliest works. The world of man is best captured through the lives of the men who created history. Number 11. Tacitus. Publius Cornelius Tacitus was a Roman historian and politician. Tacitus is widely regarded as one of the greatest Roman historians by modern scholars. Tacitus lived in what has been called the Silver Age of Latin literature, and has a reputation for the brevity and compactness of his Latin prose, as well as for his penetrating insights into the psychology of power politics. His two major works, The Annals and the Histories, examine the reigns of the emperors Tiberius, Claudius, Nero, and those who reigned in the year of the four emperors. These two works span the history of the Roman Empire from the death of Augustus, in the First Jewish-Roman War. Tacitus' other writings discuss oratory, Germania, and the life of his father-in-law, Agricola, the general responsible for much of the Roman conquest of Britain, mainly focusing on his campaign in Britannia. Tacitus' works are also a chief source next to the Bible and the works of Josephus for providing a significant and independent extra-biblical account of the life and crucifixion of Jesus of Nazareth. Number 10. Sophocles. Sophocles was one of the three great tragedians of ancient Greece along with Aeschylus and Euripides. He wrote 123 tragedies during his life, but only seven of which have completely survived including Antigone, Oedipus the King and Electra. He is known to have developed the art of theatre by introducing initiatives such as the addition of a third actor and scenography. For almost 50 years, Sophocles was the most celebrated playwright in the dramatic competitions of the city-state of Athens which took place during the religious festivals of the Lanea and the Dionysia. He competed in 30 competitions, won 24, and was never judged lower than second place. Aeschylus won 13 competitions, and was sometimes defeated by Sophocles, Euripides won 4. The most famous tragedies of Sophocles feature Oedipus and Antigone, they are generally known as the The Band Plays, though each was part of a different tetralogy, the other members of which are now lost. Sophocles influenced the development of drama, most importantly by adding a third actor, attributed to Sophocles by Aristotle, to Aeschylus by Themistius, thereby reducing the importance of the chorus in the presentation of the plot. He also developed his characters to a greater extent than earlier playwrights. Number 9. Herodotus. Herodotus is considered by many the father of history. He was the first to approach history as a science. It is worth mentioning that the word history itself comes from his book histories which in Greek means stories. Herodotus was an ancient Greek writer, geographer, and historian born in the Greek city of Halicarnassus, part of the Persian Empire, now Bodrum, Turkey. He is known for having written the histories, a detailed account of the Greco-Persian Wars. Herodotus was the first writer to do systematic investigation of historical events. He is referred to as the father of history, a title conferred on him by the ancient Roman orator Cicero. The histories primarily covers the lives of prominent kings and famous battles such as Marathon, Thermopylae, Artemisium, Salamis, Plataea, and Michael. His work deviates from the main topics to provide cultural, ethnographical, geographical, and historiographical background that forms an essential part of the narrative and provides readers with a wellspring of additional information. Herodotus has been criticized for his inclusion of legends and fanciful accounts in his work. 
Fellow historian Thucydides accused him of making up stories for entertainment. However, Herodotus explained that he reported what he saw and, what was, told to him. A sizable portion of the histories has since been confirmed by modern historians and archaeologists. Number 8. Virgil. Publius Virgilius Maro, usually called Virgil in English, was an ancient Roman poet of the Augustan period. Virgil was a prolific Roman poet, best remembered for his epic, Aeneid. He was to Rome what Homer was to Greece. The national epic of ancient Rome, Aeneid follows the fortunes of the Trojan refugee, Aeneas. It is the mythical story of the founding of Rome, a story that has given us our idea of that event and the history of Rome before the modern period. It has been, and is still, used by writers as the basis of Western history and values. Virgil composed three of the most famous poems in Latin literature, the Eclogues, or Bucolics, the Georgics, and the Epic Aeneid. A number of minor poems, collected in the Appendix Virgiliana, were attributed to him in ancient times, but modern scholars consider his authorship of these poems as dubious. Virgil's work has had wide and deep influence on Western literature, most notably Dante's Divine Comedy, in which Virgil appears as the author's guide through hell and purgatory. Virgil has been traditionally ranked as one of Rome's greatest poets. His Aeneid is also considered a national epic of ancient Rome, a title held since composition. Number 7. Aristophanes. Aristophanes was a comic playwright who wrote 40 plays, only 11 of which have survived entirely. His most famous works were the Ecclesia Zeusi, the Frogs and Lysistrata. His plays have provided historians with information about life in Athens of that era. The plays of Aristophanes provide the most valuable examples of a genre of comic drama known as old comedy and are used to define it, along with fragments from dozens of lost plays by Aristophanes and his contemporaries. Also known as the father of comedy and the prince of ancient comedy, Aristophanes has been said to recreate the life of ancient Athens more convincingly than any other author. His powers of ridicule were feared and acknowledged by influential contemporaries. Plato singled out Aristophanes' play The Clouds as slander that contributed to the trial and subsequent condemning to death of Socrates, although other satirical playwrights had also caricatured the philosopher. Aristophanes' second play, The Babylonians, now lost, was denounced by Cleon as a slander against the Athenian polis. It is possible that the case was argued in court, but details of the trial are not recorded and Aristophanes caricatured Cleon mercilessly in his subsequent plays, especially The Knights, the first of many plays that he directed himself. In my opinion, he says through that play's chorus, the author-director of comedies has the hardest job of all. Number 6. Aeschylus. Aeschylus was an ancient Greek tragedian, and is often described as the father of tragedy. Academic knowledge of the genre begins with his work, and understanding of earlier Greek tragedy is largely based on inferences made from reading his surviving plays. According to Aristotle, he expanded the number of characters in the theatre and allowed conflict among them. Formally, characters interacted only with the chorus. Only seven of his estimated 70 to 90 plays have survived. There is a long-standing debate regarding the authorship of one of them, Prometheus Bound, with some scholars arguing that it may be the work of his son Euphorion. Fragments from other plays have survived in quotations, and more continue to be discovered on Egyptian papyri. These fragments often give further insights into Aeschylus' work. Aeschylus was probably the first dramatist to present plays as a trilogy. His Oresteia is the only extant ancient example. At least one of his plays was influenced by the Persians' second invasion of Greece. This work, The Persians, is one of very few classical Greek tragedies concerned with contemporary events, and the only one extant. The significance of the war with Persia was so great to Aeschylus and the Greeks that his epitaph commemorates his participation in the Greek victory at Marathon while making no mention of his success as a playwright. During his presidential campaign in 1968, Senator Robert F. Kennedy quoted the Edith Hamilton translation of Aeschylus on the night of the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. Kennedy was notified of King's murder before a campaign stop in Indianapolis, Indiana, and was warned not to attend the event due to fears of rioting from the mostly African-American crowd. 
Kennedy insisted on attending and delivered an impromptu speech that delivered news of King's death. Acknowledging the audience's emotions, Kennedy referred to his own grief at the murder of Martin Luther King and, quoting a passage from the play Agamemnon, said, My favorite poet was Aeschylus. And he once wrote, Even in our sleep, pain which cannot forget falls drop by drop upon the heart, until in our own despair, against our will, comes wisdom through the awful grace of God. What we need in the United States is not division, what we need in the United States is not hatred, what we need in the United States is not violence and lawlessness, but is love and wisdom, and compassion toward one another, and a feeling of justice toward those who still suffer within our country, whether they be white or whether they be black. Let us dedicate ourselves to what the Greeks wrote so many years ago, to tame the savageness of man and make gentle the life of this world. The quotation from Aeschylus was later inscribed on a memorial at the gravesite of Robert Kennedy following his own assassination. Number 5. Homer. Homer is mainly known for Iliad and Odyssey, arguably the most famous epic poems of all time. The Iliad is the oldest work of Western literature. In ancient Greece, people considered themselves uneducated if they had not read both the Iliad and the Odyssey. What is odd is that there is no knowledge of Homer's life to such an extent that historians dispute his existence. Moreover, it may not be technically correct to label Homer as a writer since his work was brought down through history mainly through the oral tradition. The Iliad is set during the Trojan War, the ten-year siege of the city of Troy by a coalition of Mycenaean Greek kingdoms. It focuses on a quarrel between King Agamemnon and the warrior Achilles lasting a few weeks during the last year of the war. The Odyssey focuses on the ten-year journey home of Odysseus, king of Ithaca, after the fall of Troy. Many accounts of Homer's life circulated in classical antiquity, the most widespread being that he was a blind bard from Ionia, a region of central coastal Anatolia in present-day Turkey. Modern scholars consider these accounts legendary. The Homeric epics were the greatest influence on ancient Greek culture and education, to Plato, Homer was simply the one who has taught Greece. Number 4. Ovid. Publius Ovidus Naso is better known in English as Ovid. He was a Roman poet who lived during the reign of Augustus. Ovid was a contemporary of the older Virgil and Horace, with whom he is often ranked as one of the three canonical poets of Latin literature. The imperial scholar Quintilian considered him the last of the Latin love elegists. Although Ovid enjoyed enormous popularity during his lifetime, the Emperor Augustus banished him to a remote province on the Black Sea, where he remained until his death. Ovid is today best known for the Metamorphoses, a 15-book continuous mythological narrative written in the meter of epic, and for works in elegiac couplets such as Ars Amatoria, The Art of Love, and Fasti. His poetry was much imitated during late antiquity and the Middle Ages, and greatly influenced Western art and literature. The Metamorphoses remains one of the most important sources of classical mythology. Today, Ovid's vast influence is still a force in the worlds of poetry and drama. Number 3. Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu was a Chinese philosopher and founder of the Taoist religion in China. His name means Old Master. He is the reputed author of the Tao Te Ching and a deity in religious Taoism and traditional Chinese religions. A semi-legendary figure, Lao Tzu is usually portrayed as a 6th century BC contemporary of Confucius in the spring and autumn period. However, some modern historians consider him to have lived during the Warring States period of the 4th century BC. A central figure in Chinese culture, Lao Tzu is claimed by both the emperors of the Tang dynasty and modern people of the Li surname as a founder of their lineage. Laozi's work has been embraced by both various anti-authoritarian movements and Chinese legalism. Lao worked as a librarian at the court of Zhou. When the kingdom showed signs of decay, Lao Tzu left and was never heard of again. The Tao Te Ching is said to be his view on the principles of his philosophy. The work is one of the most significant treatises in Chinese cosmogony. As with most other ancient Chinese philosophers, Lao Tzu often explains his ideas by way of paradox, analogy, appropriation of ancient sayings, repetition, symmetry, rhyme, and rhythm. In fact, the whole book can be read as an analogy, the ruler is the awareness, or self, in meditation and the myriad creatures or empire is the experience of the body, senses and desires.
Number 2. Plato. Plato was a student of Socrates. The latter never wrote anything of his own. However, his philosophy became known through the works of Plato. Plato was very influenced by his master's thinking. The most famous of Plato's work were the Republic and the Symposium. Plato himself was an Athenian philosopher during the classical period in ancient Greece, founder of the Platonist school of thought and the academy, the first institution of higher learning in the Western world. He is widely considered a pivotal figure in the history of ancient Greek and Western philosophy, along with his teacher, Socrates, and his most famous student, Aristotle. Plato has also often been cited as one of the founders of Western religion and spirituality, the so-called Neoplatonism of philosophers such as Plotinus and Porphyry greatly influenced Christianity through church fathers such as Augustine. Plato was an innovator of the written dialogue and dialectic forms in philosophy. Plato is also considered the founder of Western political philosophy. His most famous contribution is the theory of forms known by pure reason, in which Plato presents a solution to the problem of universals known as Platonism, also ambiguously called either Platonic Realism or Platonic Idealism. He is also the namesake of Platonic love and the Platonic solids. His own most decisive philosophical influences are usually thought to have been along with Socrates, the pre-Socratics Pythagoras, Heraclitus and Parmenides, although few of his predecessors' works remain extant and much of what we know about these figures today derives from Plato himself. Unlike the work of nearly all of his contemporaries, Plato's entire body of work is believed to have survived intact for over 2,400 years. Although their popularity has fluctuated, Plato's works have consistently been read and studied. Number 1. Aristotle. Aristotle was one of Plato's students and the first to doubt him. Sadly, only 47 of his works have survived. Aristotle is considered the last of the great Greek philosophers and was the tutor of Alexander the Great. He founded logic as a science. Taught by Plato, he was the founder of the Lyceum, the peripatetic school of philosophy, and the Aristotelian tradition. His writings cover many subjects including physics, biology, zoology, metaphysics, logic, ethics, aesthetics, poetry, theatre, music, rhetoric, psychology, linguistics, economics, politics, meteorology, geology and government. Aristotle provided a complex synthesis of the various philosophies existing prior to him. It was above all from his teachings that the West inherited its intellectual lexicon, as well as problems and methods of inquiry. As a result, his philosophy has exerted a unique influence on almost every form of knowledge in the West and it continues to be a subject of contemporary philosophical discussion. Little is known about his life. Aristotle was born in the city of Stagiae in northern Greece. His father, Nicomachus, died when Aristotle was a child, and he was brought up by a guardian. At 17 or 18 years of age he joined Plato's academy in Athens and remained there until the age of 37. Shortly after Plato died, Aristotle left Athens and, at the request of Philip II of Maston, tutored Alexander the Great beginning in 343 BC. He established a library in the Lyceum which helped Aristotle to produce many of his hundreds of books on papyrus scrolls. Though Aristotle wrote many elegant treatises and dialogues for publication, only around a third of his original output has survived, none of it intended for publication. Aristotle's views profoundly shaped medieval scholarship. The influence of physical science extended from late antiquity and the early Middle Ages into the Renaissance, and were not replaced systematically until the Enlightenment and theories such as classical mechanics were developed. Some of Aristotle's zoological observations found in his biology, such as on the hectocotyl, reproductive, arm of the octopus, were disbelieved until the 19th century. He also influenced Judeo-Islamic philosophies, 800 to 1400, during the Middle Ages, as well as Christian theology, especially the Neoplatonism of the early church and the scholastic tradition of the Catholic Church. Aristotle was revered among medieval Muslim scholars as the first teacher, and among medieval Christians like Thomas Aquinas as simply the philosopher, while the poet Dante called him the master of those who know. His works contain the earliest known formal study of logic, and were studied by medieval scholars such as Peter A. Blard and John Buridan. Aristotle's influence on logic continued well into the 19th century. 
In addition, his ethics, though always influential, gained renewed interest with the modern advent of virtue ethics. Ayn Rand acknowledged Aristotle as the only philosopher to whom she was indebted, the father of logic who defined the basic principles of a rational view of existence and of man's consciousness. Rand concurred with Aristotle that man's life should be guided by reason and that the purpose of man's life is happiness. She agreed that happiness depended on objective, external conditions rather than on a subjective, internal disposition. Aristotle has been called the father of logic, the father of biology, the father of political science, the father of zoology, the father of embryology, the father of natural law, the father of scientific method, the father of rhetoric, the father of psychology, the father of realism, the father of criticism, the father of individualism, the father of teleology, and the father of meteorology. Clearly, more than 2,300 years after his death, Aristotle remains one of the most influential people who ever lived. We hope you have enjoyed this list of the top writers of antiquity. What do you think? Have we missed anyone, or is the order we have presented misaligned with yours? Let us know in the comments below. We would love to hear your thoughts. As always, thank you for watching, and if you appreciate what we are doing on the Classic Masterworks channel, please let us know by liking and subscribing. We will see you next time.